Pulling up Instagram, the gram, the Facebook, all of that. Bear with me. All right, let's do this. What's up everyone, Jeremy Majors here with Majors Academy Dog Training out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And this is our weekly dog behavior Q&A. Where you can ask me anything you like. Anything that comes to mind. Uh, if you're on the fence about asking any questions, just do it. Uh, because it may help out others that are watching. It will help out others. Because you are not the only ones that are struggling with some of the things that you're struggling with. So please feel free to uh, ask as many questions as you like. The better the conversation, the better the show. We're live on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And we are also live on iTunes. So all of the above. As people join in, uh, just make sure that you guys can hear me because uh, we have we have had some technical issues uh, Previous to this I'm still getting used to all this equipment. So make sure you guys can hear me. Okay All right guys Might as well get to some questions okay. Oh and the title of actually this, uh, you know, dog behavior Q and A, or this show, whatever you want to call it, uh, is lost dog psychology. Because I do have a um, confession or a situation that happened to me, um, and my uh, uh, business, I guess. I had a dog that got away from me two days ago. Um, the dog came in on Sunday, and on Monday it got away from me. So I want to, thought this would be a good opportunity to, uh, to kind of go through, uh, you know, what goes on when a dog runs away, why they run away, how to get them back, um, and, uh, again, depending on the dog's temperament, uh, determines how you should approach getting them back. So let's just talk about that, starting off the bat. And if we have any questions, I'll answer, I'll go ahead and stop what we're talking about and I'll answer your question. All right? Um, so, lost dog psychology. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Before we get into that, I do have a, little, a brief question. Well, it's not brief because it's not going to be uh, I don't answer really any questions brief, but okay. What do you think about the pit bull breed and the misconceptions? Uh, we'd have to list off the misconceptions because not all the misconceptions, in my opinion, are um, totally inaccurate. Um, I should tell you that I am a, a lover of the breed. I'm an advocate for the for the breed. Um, whatever that means. I don't really care to, to in, in the beginning, maybe five years ago, I was all about it, you know. Uh, but now I don't care uh, so much about one breed. I think all breeds are awesome, equally as awesome. Um, when you experience enough dogs, the breed starts to matter less. And so I'm not stuck on the idea that, you know, we have to keep this breed. Uh, you know, we have to advocate for a specific breed. I don't, I'm not going to play into that because um, I don't see the point. Um, I will say pit bulls are, uh, they're terriers. So they're going to be high energy, high prey drive. And you, you guys, you know, who's... You guys who have watched me in the past definitely know how I feel about pit bulls. I give it to you straight. I don't care about 
you know, people's, you know, people get butthurt about it when I tell them. Um, so again, I want to re-emphasize that I care about the dog as a species, not the individual breed. I don't care what kind of breed I have as long as I have a dog. It's like, you know, you know, it's, it's similar to me, a, very similar when it comes to humans. We're all human. You don't need to be caring about what you look like. Uh, we're still human. So that's how, sort of how I uh, look at it. And that's sort of how I think about it. Um, that being said, um, the pit bull, as, na as for now, is being portrayed as a dog that can be for everyone and can be in any situation. And that is simply not true. Similar, similarly to a Border Collie. A Border Collie cannot be, should not be, in an apartment. A, the Beagle, any hound, any working dog should not be in an apartment. So we have to know the breed and we have to be realistic about what they bring. So there you go. That's my answer. I don't want to get into that any uh, any further than that because I've already had, I already have. Look, I'm getting some mad emojis and some and some sad emojis. <laughs> some people are getting angry about the pit bull. That's okay. Hey, Brandy, how are you? Um. So yeah, those are my two cents. And don't get me wrong, I know the pit bull more than more than the average dude for sure. So uh, they're easy to train. But uh, they do have needs uh, that are similar to working dogs, and uh, in the right, in the wrong situation, just like a border collie, just like a German Shepherd, just like any working breed, in the wrong situation, it can be bad. There you go. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday night. Um, if anyone is having a drink, cheers to you, because I am. So cheers. Okie dokie. So back to the... Let me make sure I don't have any questions here on YouTube. I got four American Bully, two Cane Corsos, and one Great Dane. Sounds like a blast. I'm trying to make my own... Dog. Okay. Cool. Uh, Alright. So let's talk about the lost dog psychology and the psychology behind what goes on. Uh, when your dog runs away from you. So first of all, it is my belief, and again, this is going to be hard to hear. I don't care though, because I really want to, um, I really want to give people uh, the, a different way of uh, looking at how they're treating their dog. I do think that um, we become we become we become so comfortable in normalcy, and it really damages the relationship uh, that many dogs have with their owner. 50% of rescue dogs, I read this stat somewhere, 50% um, of rescue dogs are returned. But if that's true, then that's absolutely bonkers. That's nuts. Okay. Um, and so it's been my job, obviously, to help people keep their dog alive and uh, keeping them from going back to the shelter is a, is a good step. So lost dog psychology. So again, it is my belief, if your dog is running away from you, if your dog is not wanting to be in your situation or in your yard, then your dog has not experienced the outside world enough. So take your dog out the backyard. Explore with your dog. Let your dog become comfortable or maybe just give the dog a fix of being somewhere other than your backyard. Um, and then I'm not saying that that is true for all dogs, but for some dogs I do feel like that is, that is true. Um, my, dad, my dad's dog, so here's, here's a perfect, perfect example of a dog that runs away and a dog that doesn't. And, a bit, and it has to do with your relationship. All right, I'm, I'm really going to think about that. No dog has ever ran away from me, has ever ran away from my care, my personal dog. Okay. So let's break that down a little bit. 
If your dog is running away from you, it the, it can speak on the lack of uh, respect that the dog has for you in your relationship. Why is your dog running away from you? And then why is your dog not listening to you? One of the best and most important things to teach your dog is to respond to the word come. It can save your dog's life. So if your dog doesn't have that, then you're robbing your dog of its full experience um, living with you. Um, you're going to get what you want out of the relationship. But let's not let that be the only concern. And it is the majority, uh, the majority of the time, that is what we're only concerned about, what we can get out of it. Because if we're really concerned about the experience of the dog's life while they're living, then we will be what, who we need to be. We will get the respect uh, that we need to get in order for the dog to be off leash. I don't care your situation. I don't care if you're in an apartment. I don't care if you don't have a fence. That's no excuse. The dog is not supposed to be on leash for the for their entire life. That's that's crazy. Let your dog go. If your dog wants, I'm the I'm. My philosophy is, if my dogs want to run away from me, see you later. It was nice knowing you. I'm not going to try to control you to that level. Because I, I, I definitely believe that if there's somewhere better that you'd rather be, you can go ahead and go. I don't want to hold you here. Don't want to trap you. Don't want to keep you in a box. Don't want to keep you in a cage. I want you to go. If you want to go, go ahead. See you later. Not chasing you. Not going to keep you just because I need you. You need to go somewhere, man. Go. But as a result of that thinking, though, guys, all right, I'm not telling you to just go, all right, unclip the leash. See if your dog actually cares about, you know, Coming back to you. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that, you know, my dogs choose to come back because um, they want to come back. They have the freedom to do to 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 uh, leave me. They have the freedom to go. And then once they experience that freedom, once they have that option, they choose to be by me happily. You can watch all of my, any of my off-leash videos, and you will see happy dogs that come every time I call them. Okay, so that's, that's, that's very important. To prevent your dog from running away. If your dog is running away from you, you've got to start making some changes. If your dog wants to go, let him go, and go with them. Experience, again, Experience what they want to experience with them so that they get tired or they get norm they get you know sort of used to Exploring so that they don't have to explore as much. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go back to uh, An example that um, That really hits home for me Okay, so my dad had a boxer has a boxer named Rocky and then the next door neighbor had a, a German Shepherd named named Luca and um, my dad leaves the gate open so that Rocky can go and wander when he wants, uh, but he never leaves the yard, okay? And on the other hand, the next door neighbor has a dog that the gate is never open, but yet the dog runs away from them all the time. All right, so... Again, we have to start to think about why dogs do that. Why do dogs want to run away and go away? Uh, okay, well, sometimes 
will give males the benefit of the doubt. If there's a female in the heat in in the area, uh, then then I won't blame my dogs from trying to go. You know, that's that's a very strong strong drive. It is actually the number one drive for a dog. A dog will choose to do the most drama dramatic things to get to a female. Okay. Um, so that will be the exception, but, but, um, uh, on top of that, if the dog has never left their backyard before, that's probably a good reason why the dog is wanting to explore because it's never explored. Or if the dog doesn't like where it's at, if the dog doesn't get what it needs, where it's, where it's at, where the, where its home is, if the dog is not getting what it needs, the dog can choose to run in that regard. So, check those things. If you if you can't trust your dog off leash, you got work to do, guys. I'm telling you, the leash is there to teach dogs how to behave off leash. All right. So that being said, I got two dogs that do not like each other. How do I fix that? All right. I'm gonna take a little break from my little lost dog rant, and I'll answer some questions. Okay, so uh, let's just talk about what do you think about American Band Dog? I don't know what American Band Dog is. You'll have to explain that to me. Um, I got two dogs that do not like each other. How, how do I fix that? Uh, well, you can start by making it um, uh, inconvenient for them to engage in fighting. Like two children. Um, set some rules that let them know that it's not okay to engage in fighting, whatever that may be. Um, also, pick up any bones, any toys, and stop giving attention at the same time. And when you walk in the door from being gone, do not pet dogs. All right, that'll stop the fighting because the dogs will not have any resources to fight over. You, bones, attention, uh, food, each other, things like that. So that's what you want to do when it comes to dogs that don't like each other. But you have to give me more information to give you a better, uh, a better answer than that. Because there's many reasons. And I can get into it, but um, if you want, tell me why they're fighting or tell me what they're fighting over. And I can give you a better answer. Alright? Thanks for your question. Feel free to ask another. Oh boy, we got some questions on Facebook. I didn't even see them. Can you explain to people why your dogs have that freedom? Uh, why my dogs have that freedom? Um, well, they have that freedom because I give it to them. Um, I feel like they enjoy it so much. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they enjoy it so much that I have to... Um... Uh, I feel like they enjoy it so much I have to give it to them. It literally is probably, in my opinion, the best thing that you can provide your dog. Uh, toys, they're all secondary. Treats, secondary. Affection, secondary. What are dogs? What are what are dogs, man? They're explorers. They're hunters. They're they're predators. They want to hunt, they want to smell, they want to mark, they want to run, they want to migrate. They want to release anxiety. So you get all of that checked off when you allow your dog to be off leash and just, you know, and walk with them. You know what I'm saying? You fulfill them. That's what I'm talking about. That's why it's important. Thanks for your question or comment. Where can I find tips on how to introduce new babies? To the home slash dog that's a good question right here right now i'll give you some tips uh, because i have an eight month old so i'm fresh hi bente from norway how are you i hope i pronounced your name right bente okay so uh new baby bringing in a new baby 
Whew, this is gonna be a long-winded answer too. I don't have short-winded answers. Just got just so you guys know, uh, answers are just not simple. I don't, I don't. Um, yeah, it's just not that simple. But hold on, let me take a sip first. Okay. So, all right, when you bring in a new dog. Excuse me. When you bring in a baby to your dog, <clears throat> uh, it depends on the temperament of the dog. Let's just start with that. It depends on the temperament of the dog. Um, if your dog has historically been good with children, I mean, some people just don't have any boundaries with their dog when it comes to their baby, and the dog and baby are fine. They get along great. Okay. Then you have the cautious dog. So I'm going to give you the explanation or the answer that will work for any dog because I will take, in, take into consideration the most cautious, fearful, aggressive dog dogs out there. That may not be your dog, but it doesn't mean it won't work for your dog. You can just take an abbreviated version of the things that I'm about to say. All right, to ensure a smooth transition with any new thing, especially the baby, you 100% have to have the dog under your control. If the dog has free will or uh, too much freedom around your baby, the dog can become insecure, the dog can become in aggressive, the dog can become obtrusive or whatever it may be all those negative things if you have a lack of control your control um, equals um, them to be humble or, or uh, to uh, sort of submit to the new situation they're going to get less attention for a while you know what I mean I mean they are going to get a lot less attention so you want to start you could start sort of building a more autonomous relationship right from the get-go like right now you know if the dog sort of demands attention and gets attention when it wants then you want to start saying especially if you don't feel like it telling the dog no go lay down you know what I mean? Um, start having that sort of control. Because the lack of attention, again, if your dog is an attention whore, and you bring in this new baby that gets all the attention, or the majority of, the attention, of attention, sometimes it's a rough transition for a dog. Uh, and they can get jealous. So, uh, so what I did, I'll just tell you what I did. When I brought in my kids, um, my dogs did not come close to my baby at all for the first month and a half. It wasn't even in my, it wasn't even in the back of my mind. Oh my God, what am I going to do with the dogs? Oh my gosh, what are the dogs going to, you know. I was just giving them what they need and giving my baby what my baby needed. Um, it wasn't even a thing for me. I really allow my dogs to accommodate to me and what I want as opposed to the other way around. Um, but again, that's not to say that I don't give them what they need. I definitely give them, you know, attention, uh, exercise, discipline, whatever that is, all that stuff. Um, so, so for a whole month and a half, they did not come up and sniff because I don't have easy dogs. My dogs are not easy. Okay, my dogs have come from tough background. Um, they uh, they all were aggressive in some way. So I take my time. I want to make sure that they can get uh, used to the smells, the sounds, you know, the picture at a distance from a distance, you know what I'm saying? Before 
they get closer and closer. And as they start to not care about those things, then we can start to take the next step. You know, so just read your dog. If your dog comes to uh, a calm mind state, then you know that it's okay to maybe take the next step. But if not, you know, to ensure success, keep the dog separate for a while. Let the dog just adjust and become comfortable with the separation until it's comfortable. Alright? Thank you for your question. It's going to help out a lot of people. Feel free to ask another. What's your opinion on... Hey, Maylee, I'm sorry I missed your question. All right, but here it is. You ready? I hope you're still watching. What's your opinion on dog behaviors? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, you mean... I don't know what you mean. Dog behaviors. I don't know what you mean. Is there a specific, like... I would consider myself a dog behavior. You are. You know, I don't know. I, I don't stick to any sort of uh, idol, though. Or, you know, I really, I do think that communication is very effective. So, um, I, I want to learn all the lingo of dog trainers among the dog trainers, but I also can only become so attached to that stuff because I do think that true thinking and true problem solving can be lost uh, when we stick to grammar, or not grammar, when we stick to lingo or when we try and um, articulate what we do and, and how to do certain things we just uh, focus on what, what we're saying, you know, uh, to the owner. I don't want to confuse the owner. So when I ever, when, whenever I have a discussion with a dog trainer, you'll definitely find me saying, okay, what does that mean? Because we need to be clear. Obviously, dog trainers have communication issues amongst each other <laughs> uh, because so many people are so invested in their ways of training on that. You know what? I'm okay with that. I don't think any any two trainers have the same experience. There are trainers out there that have years and years and years and years of Okay, but let, let's just talk about that for a second. Is that, is that really good? I can talk to someone who tells me they have 20 years of dog training, but yet still grabs the collar of a dog that don't know, and then the dog snaps at them. So it always has been my opinion that when a dog trainer tells me they have 20 years experience, that starts to mean less and less to me. I can't really take your, what you call your experience and value that on your skill. I gotta see you work out. And I don't mean to sound, I don't mean to sound arrogant or whatever that is, whatever. But it's frustrating. Because when a trainer tells you that they have 20 years of experience, then they sort of put, put themselves on the or, or change the direction of the conversation to only go a certain way. They're only going to be able to hear certain things because they may only really want to hear certain things. I don't know why that is. Is that the same way with horse trainers? There's a real, there's a lot of arrogance within dog 
dog training. Uh, there's a saying that goes around amongst dog trainers that only oh, the only thing two dog trainers can agree on is that the third one is wrong. I imagine I would just keep them out shut. Because I don't know. I don't like to play games. So I feel like if you're trying to really solve a problem, I will give my two cents. But this is a whose ego is bigger and who can articulate better and who can say what better. I am not playing that game. It's annoying. There's a lot of trainers that will uh, again they're good with their words. They're good with presenting what they think is right. And more power to them. I'm not hating on any of that. But my concentration is solely on how to uh, solve problems for people. And uh, so I don't subscribe to tough lingo. I just really want to concentrate on how, how to get a dog from... How to get keep a dog from biting people and other dogs. That'd be good. All right. <clears throat> All right. What's your opinion of chain stores, Petco, PetSmart dog classes, especially, especially with tougher breeds? Well, with tougher breeds, I think. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not that productive for the tougher breeds. I mean, uh, again, so here we go. You know, what's tougher breeds? Is tougher breeds meaning working breeds? Does tougher breeds meaning high drive dogs? You know, because to the average owner, sure, that's a tough breed, yeah. Uh, but Petco and PetSmart, um, I mean, not to say that it's worthless, worth, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, a waste of time. Um, I think people, some people have like a, excuse me, I think some people have like a assumption that, that, uh, every dog trainer does classes and you know that could, I guess it goes because it goes in a line with uh, with kids kids go to school kids go to class dogs need to go to training class this and that but um, you know there's classes are classes Can only be so effective. It's not real world. There's a lot of dogs who can do well in class and do horrible outside of the class. You know what I mean? So if I have a pit bull, where should I take it for obedience training? Depends on your temperament of your pit bull. There are some pit bulls that are super laid back. There are some pit bulls that are very, very cool, calm, and collected. If you have a high drive pit bull, um, then you can take it to a working dog club. That'd be awesome. Teach the dog how to channel its drive. Teach you how to channel its drive. He wants to go after. You're at, you're basically shaping. Um, you, you basically uh, are shaping their drive to do what they need to do anyway you know what I mean um, because if you have a high prey drive dog they're going to want to chase what they perceive to be as prey and if you take them to a working dog club 
And they get to do that. They get to be fulfilled in a controlled way. And you then learn how to control them. And they also get to learn how to control themselves. So, um, it depends on the temperament of your dog. It'd be great, it would be beneficial if you do have a high prey drive dog to learn how to, how to, uh, work that dog on a sort of a working dog level, you know, or, or a sport dog level. I own a dog three years, just got him from a friend, but he wants to attack a lot. Wait a minute. I own a dog for three years, just got him a friend. <clears throat> he wants to attack. You may not just know him enough, you know what I mean? You may have to keep him separate for a while so that they can uh, get to know each other. All right. Okay, this question is for Brittany. Any reason you can think of as to why a dog would start to chew furniture after having her for a year? What is the best ways to stop it? She has plenty of toys, bones to play with. She has lived with my two other dogs her whole life and has an access to a big yard at all times. Gets a fair amount of exercise each day. Well, you have to question how much exercise is necessary for that dog. Or if the dog is being like that, then the dog needs to go in a crate for two weeks. You know what I mean? What has changed? Sometimes behavior changes depending on how much time we can give them. Or how much exercise is actually afforded to them on a daily basis. This winter was rough for a lot of people. Got a lot of calls uh, because this winter was rough. And the winter was rough, which resulted in, again, lack of exercise that we could provide our dogs. And uh, as a result of that, there was a lot of misbehaved dogs out there this year. This year provided a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, well, provided a lack of opportunity to exercise our dogs. So you'll have to check in on that. Um, and you can stop that Again, by just evaluating how much exercise this dog needs. Dog may need more than your other dogs. Dog just may not be getting enough. Uh, and so, try a different form of exercise. Instead of taking the dog and just in the backyard, um, try taking the dog on a walk. It may need to be stimulated mentally because the backyard probably gets uh, repetitive, boring, same thing over and over again. I guarantee you, if you take the dog to a pet store or somewhere where it's never been before, take the dog on a walk, you'll have a tired dog. You can try that. And then the, the, be, the chewing behavior may go away as well. All right. Thank you for your question. Feel free to ask another. Okay. Jessica says, our first class with Remy was at PetSmart. He obviously high drive. He got kicked out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. PetSmart and Petco don't know how to deal with high drive dogs. But I can tell you what, too, Jessica. You should... Uh, that would be beneficial to you. I know you guys got a lot on your plate, but there's a there's a working dog club in Black Creek called Fox Tile Police and Schutzen Club, and um, you know, once again, uh, it is very beneficial to learn how to work those high prey drive dogs, because the best benefit is is you see the dog you're seeing the dog be able to go at a very high level, high energy, right? The dog's high energy is promoted. It's provoked. And then it's, you're demanding obedience within that high drive. So guess what happens? You're able to control the dog at its highest level of arousal. And that is very tough for 
the average pet owner. You know what I mean? That guarantees that your dog will listen to you no matter how excited he is. Think about that. That's awesome. If your dog sees another dog and goes sprinting after that dog, you will have the control to say, down, and the dog downs, 30, 40 yards away from you. Imagine that. I'll give you the last example that happened to me. I was at a working dog club that I was the helper of, and the helper just means I'm the guy the dog bites. And um, some dog got loose, it happens every now and then, and started sprinting towards this other dog. Now listen, let me tell you, at the working dog club, no dogs get to meet other dogs. It's just, it's just not necessary. Okay, so when a dog sees another dog and they're off leash, they go sprinting towards it. This lady uh, yelled, Platz! Which is German for down. And the dog, because it's been trained to do that, separate from any dogs or anything like that, dog went straight and down. The owner walked right to him, put the leash on him, boom, done. Okay, imagine that. Imagine having that type of control. Wow. Wow. It can save your dog's life. You know, uh, we really got to, uh, we really got to uh, evaluate, like I said, how well our dogs are listening and start to change the dynamics of the relationship based on what can save their life, not what's convenient for us. What's convenient for us is, oh, they snuggle with us on the couch and we can snuggle with them. I see tons of pictures on Facebook of all these dogs. We could, you just wanted to snuggle in my bed and all this and that. Uh, Uh, okay, those are all those things are really easy. It takes no effort. You know what takes effort? Giving the dog what it needs to to have a very fulfilling life. Because if the dog was fulfilled with just cuddles, kisses, and treats, then there'd be no such thing as dog training. There'd be no need for it. But that does not what make that doesn't make dogs happy. Okay, it's not the only thing that makes dogs happy. Especially long term. We gotta think long term. Treats are short term, cuddles are long, are short term. But let's let's give our dogs the best life. Like right now. Like right now, let's give our dogs the best life. How convenient, how cool is it to be able to have a dog you can travel with, uh, find a nice park, or maybe even a gas station where you're traveling, let the dog out, and know that the dog is going to be able to explore, walk around, you know, do what dogs do. That's where we gotta be. That's where we gotta think. That's what we gotta provide our dogs. Give them that. And you may see that uh, behavior will change simply because of that. <clears throat> can you teach that type of control? Yeah, I can. I have uh, definitely experience with working dogs. And the pit bull needs to be a working dog. Is that is that considered a working dog by the AKC? Or is it a terrier group? And why the hell is the terrier group not a working dog group? Because terrier actually literally means to the ground after prey. Like that's working. Herding breeds can be the same thing as working breeds. But what what? What is the distinction between a working breed and a herding breed? Besides being specific on what they do. Herding is working. Herding is a job. And if you got a dog who is a herding breed, go, there's places now that teach 
dogs how to herd. Isn't that cool? That is the best thing ever. If I had a Border Collie, if I had an Australian Shepherd, if I had a Rottweiler, yeah, I said it, Rottweiler. If I had a German Shepherd, if I had any sort of herding breed, the Rottweiler once was a herding breed, then I would go seek out one of those herding dog trainers. That would be amazing to see. Uh, I've got a, a friend who's an agility trainer. She's got a she's she's got a, a place out in Oregon. She has a Boston Terrier that she went to take uh, to a herding dog trainer. Some cool stuff. But what about a dog aggressive dog that cuddles on the couch with his new dog? New dog house kids. Uh, I'd say that's a victory. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know exactly who you're talking about. So, hey, small steps, baby steps. One battle is one in that situation. So. Here we go. Cheers, Burnett. Okay, here's the last half of the lost dog psychology little thing. I'll end the show with this little uh, explanation. Well, it's not going to be little, but... Um, okay, so we already explained that you want to evaluate the dynamics of your relationship if your dog continues to run away from you. Because, again, I do think that is... A big factor and I kind of briefly went over before in the in the beginning of the podcast how to change that how to improve that okay all right so now let's talk about once your dog is gone away from you what to do dogs already chosen to run away Again, I had a dog that in my care that I'm training do that. What do you do when the dog is actually away? Okay, so first and foremost, here's the other thing. It is my big time belief that even fearful dogs, all right, they have a thinking mind. All dogs do, but... Fearful dogs have to, especially if they go away from me, they have to go through that process of, I gotta explore what I want to explore. Or I've got to see what I think I need to see. You know what I'm saying? They think they need to get away. Or they, they think they want to get away. Okay, go, do it. And I'm not saying that I wasn't looking for the dog because I really was. But in the back of my mind, I have faith because I know dog behavior. And um, there was one other dog that <laughs> has gotten away from me out of the six years now that I've been in business. And uh, 300 dogs. Out of 300 dogs that I've trained since I've been in Wisconsin. Um, dog name was Indy. Went away from me. And this dog um, spent significant time with me. So... This dog was with me for about a week or so. And that's not significant in the grand scheme of things. But it's enough to uh, teach the dog that I'm not, I'm okay. You don't have to fear me. And you dang sure shouldn't be running away from me. Or I'm good enough to come back to. You know what I'm saying? So, dog, I lifted up the crate. I mean, I lifted up the, uh, my, my, the back of my van. Opened the crate. The dog got scared. Boom bolted, ran right away, all right? I told my wife, I said, I'm not, I'm not, I was very sure at this point. I said, I'm not going out looking for this dog, man. Um, he's gonna come back. He's gonna realize because of his temperament, because fearful dogs, again, it, it's, it's difficult to explain, but fearful dogs are gonna fear the outside world more than 
uh, where they were. You know what I'm saying? So that's a driving force to get them to want to come back. You know what I mean? Once they realize that, again, they're away from their comfort, you know, when, if, the, if that place was actually comfortable, which was my place, then they're going to go back to comfort. You can scare a dog back to comfort is what I'm trying to say. You know, so if you even see a, 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 a loose dog, you may scare the dog back to going back home. And so, sure enough, dog, I don't know how long it took, maybe 10 minutes, dog came right on back. And, um, okay, so let's just talk about that. And I'm probably going to be jumping back and forth, but I, so I apologize. But when a dog comes back to you, okay, first of all, don't chase the dog. You're not going to catch it, so don't even think about chasing it. All right, here's a tip. Walk the other way. And then let the dog come to you. Have some treats. Have a steak. I don't care what you have. And give it to him. But especially a fearful dog, you, you can't, you this is the mistake that I made with the dog that ran away Monday. I got out the car. I said, Olive! Dog saw me. Dog heard me and just sprinted. The other way. But this is a highly fearful dog. Um, and even me stopping the car, the dog was like, I mean, at this point, this dog acted like a deer. I mean, it really was. It was deer-like. You know how skittish some deers can be, especially if they're in an area where they're hunting. So, um, yeah, this dog dipped out. Uh, okay. So I'll just tell you what happened with this dog. So the dog, so I got out. So the dog ran away, had no idea where it went. I tried to look for the foot, footprints, some footprints. Uh, I tried to, you know, casually look around. It's very fortunate that we live in a in the country because there's nothing but cornfields so you can see far away you know what i'm saying and you still couldn't see this dog i'm like this dog is a freaking ghost man um i'm like where is this dog at but still in the back of my mind i'm like this dog's gonna show up you know what i'm saying but this dog in particular is too afraid to go up to anybody so it's not like I'm gonna get a phone call. So, so I'm like, oh crap, here we go. But uh, so anyway, my first attempt when I saw the dog, it was in the middle of a cornfield, no, or just a field uh, that has just been recently plowed, and you can just see it. You can see the dog. It was a rainy day too. Um, so I got out the car, and as soon as the dog saw that I paid it any mind, the dog sprinted away. I'm like, man, where you going, man? I'm in, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, man, what the? I'm like, what is going on here? Why, why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying? And so, um, so then I thought, okay, you're obviously not going to come to me. You don't know me, you know. It's only been one day, that's fine. But I did give you some, I did give you comfort in some way. And... The dog was going in the direction of our place before I scared it. You know what I'm saying? So the dog looked like it wanted to come back. You know what I mean? It was trying to work itself back to me, which was awesome. Um, so that just tells you that, okay, if I leave this dog alone enough, it could just find its way all the way back. It's a hound mix, by the way. So got a good nose on it this is what I'm thinking uh, so my other thought was all right let me go get a dog you know what I mean I'm gonna go get a dog and the dog's gonna naturally do what dogs do when they see a dog you know, run up to the dog and boom that was gonna be my solution I was gonna grab the leash dog still had the leash on so I got went and brought Oakley out and for a second, she thought about coming, man. She paused. You know, she was thinking a little bit. 
you know, but at this point, the dog was pretty exhausted, too. The dog's nine years old, so it's a senior dog. I was like, oh, shoot. You know what I mean? Um, because the second time I, I found it on the field, spotted it on the field, the dog was laying down. You know, the dog was a little tired, man. I was like, come on, man. Just come to me, man. Come to me. So, all right, I got Okule out there. Dog thought about it, but then was like, nah, not doing it. Ran away again. <laughs> uh, ran into the woods and couldn't find it because it was so far away. I mean, it wouldn't let me get a hundred yards uh, uh, close to the dog. So Oakley didn't work. So so then the, finally the um, the poor parents had to come from Sturgeon Bay because the parents were probably the only people that were going to you know get the dog to come. So I tell the parents, I said. Don't chase after this dog. The dog is freaked out. If you want, the dog is going to show up in this field because it's already done it twice. So we just kind of waited out. Uh, sure enough, dog showed back up right in the middle of the field, trying to get back to this to my place. And um, so I tell them to not go after the dog. Just bend down, you know, crouch down and call the dog. Um, so long story short, the dog ran right right to them when they did that, and we got the dog back. But it was scary for a second, for a while, man. Um, so again, you know, um, first of all, dogs just don't go, run away from me, man. You know, um, for, unfortunately, I had this dog for only one day, and the dog is a is a head case in the sense where. It's almost anxiety driven. You know, it's almost like a slave to its own anxiety and thinks it needs to do certain things. And getting away from me was one of those things. But but the day after, uh, the, I put the dog in the backyard where it got away from me and the dog stayed in the middle of my yard. Didn't even think about trying to get away this time. So. Uh, the dog was like, no, I'm good. We don't need to go through that again. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on the psychology behind lost dogs. I, I, I explained it a little bit more in the beginning of this podcast. So if you want a little bit more information, you can uh, start this over. Whew, but I'm a little tired, guys. Uh, yeah. I don't know why, but I am. So I'm gonna get off. But I thank you, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me just make sure I got everybody's question. Yep, looks like it. All right, guys, I'm gonna get off here. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for your questions. We'll be back next Wednesday. I'm glad you guys uh, can hear me actually this time. And uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, give me a like, subscribe, do what you need to do. I don't care if you do it or not, I don't, whatever. Um, but we'll be back uh, next week. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right. I got to end this one first. Then in Instagram.